how much of the galaxy have we actually searched oh. for life? See. Because I, every time I'm out in the street, someone says, we've looked and we haven't found any, are we alone? That's right. And I'm, I'm trying to find a way to tell them we're not likely alone, but they know we've been looking for a while. So how do you, how do you deal with this? So I try and tell people about all the different ways you might have to look to get it right. All the different frequencies, be at the right time, looking at the right place. All this has to come together. Right. Now, that big volume that you need to search through, set that equal to the volume of the Earth's oceans. Okay. All that water. So how much have we sampled in the last 50 years? One 12-ounce glass. It's not a lot. And so, so if you were looking for fish in the ocean, are there any fish in the Earth's ocean? Here's a glass. I'm going to scoop up a glass and I'm going to look at it. And there aren't any fish in there. Can you claim that there are no fish in the ocean? Yeah, you'd be stupid to do so. Yeah. Short-sighted. Sure. Stupid. <laughs> you're, right. you're sticking with stupid. Yeah, you're right in the first place. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a edgy. I can't say stupid. You're short-sighted. You'd be, you'd be inexcusably egocentric. That's right. And so it's the fact that the, it's hard to comprehend how big the search is. So you can't understand how little we've done. However, exponentials will save us because our ability to search the growth of technology. Computing. Exponential right. growth of storage, retrieval of information. All that stuff. Detectives. It gets faster and better all the time. And all the good stuff's at the end, right? It's really getting fast. Okay, so, so next we might get a, a garbage pail of water. Swimming pool. Swimming pool of water. And then and some then, minnows. Yeah, oh, come it could in. be. Okay. And then a lake. And then very soon, an ocean. Seth. What's your take on that? It's exploration. It's exploration. It's like sitting around in the bars of Europe, you know, 300, 400 years ago and saying, yeah, what do you think, Ralph? Do you think there's a continent at the bottom of the globe? Right? And you can say, well, what good is it going to do to find it if it's there? What we will learn is that we're unique, yes, but we're not special. I'm special. <laughs> But if we are actually alone, it would seem to me that our responsibility is even greater because if the universe has no other consciousness in it other than ours, it seems like we owe it to the universe to keep ourselves going. If, if there is no intelligent like life other than us, then the universe itself loses meaning in a way because there's nothing to, to observe it. That was beautiful, what I just said. <laughs> no, <we agree. laughs> Well, right now, it's time for Cosmic Queries. These are questions called from the internet, and they're all about sort of the search for life in the universe. And anything I can't answer, I'm handing over to this guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do it. David Hamilton, Mayagas, Puerto Rico. Would it be more likely that any intelligent signal we detect is simply an echo of life now long gone? How could we tell the difference? And if we couldn't, can we still claim we aren't alone? Seth. Yeah, well, look. People ask that. You pick up a signal, it took, you know, who knows how many years to get here. Maybe they're gone. Well, maybe they are gone. But you know what? The time it takes for a signal to get here might be tens, hundreds, thousands of years. You know, the U.S. Post Office might give me a, a letter from my aunt tomorrow, and maybe my aunt has died since she sent that letter. It's possible. But the lifetime of ants is pretty long compared to the functioning of the Postal Service, so the chances are she's still around. I think that if we pick up a signal, yeah, maybe it's a 100-year-old signal, but I'd like to think that they haven't self-destructed in the last century. Good. Next. James Coltus, Bentonville, Arkansas. If SETI discovered extraterrestrial intelligence, how long would it take to share the discovery to the public, and what is the process involved with making it public? I would say a billionth of a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you tell the president too first? Long. Does the president get to know first? No. I, look, we don't have a call list. You know, start with this, will you? <laughs> I mean, we have had false alarms. In 1997, we had a false alarm that, for most of the day, looked like the real deal. And I kept waiting for the Pentagon to call, the White House to call. The only people that called were the New York Times. And the facts are that they were calling within hours of us finding the signal. Yeah, so this notion that the government is somehow in control, and no, this is not the case. The government is not that high functioning. <laughs> <laughs>